cups? Is this the same chart that you're using at World's Cups with the pro racers? It's exactly the same sheet. It's so basic and kind of cheesy, but it's all you need. It's really very, very basic. And I have a sheet here that we use for testing. Basically, all this sheet has is your fork and shock separated, and then the settings for each one of those things. So if you start with a fork, you got pressure, spring, you got volume spacers, sag, low speed compression, high speed compression, low speed rebound, high speed rebound, and you go through the same thing for the shock. And what this does is allow you to track everything you're doing because that's one of the major mistakes people make is a not starting from the beginning like they don't know sag right you can do it by yourself it's it's i guess it's easiest with somebody helping you but all you really have to do is hop on your bike and support yourself somehow you don't want to take weight off the bike and you kind of want to be able to get in your normal riding position so i usually just put a shoulder we did this last time, I think, too. We've done it a lot, a lot of times. But still, it gets missed. So, always the first step in setting up any bike is sag. Even if you disagree with the numbers we use for sag, which are approximately 30% in the back and 15 to 20% in the front, you still need to have a reference point for where you're starting. You can go plus or minus those numbers, but you have to start somewhere. And without that number, you don't know where you're starting. So you start with pressure, check your sag, and we'll, we'll start writing that down. So I'm running on this bike, I'm running a 36, 160. I know I have 95 PSI and three volume spacers. I know my low speed compression is nine, high speed compression is seven, low speed rebound is six, high speed rebound is five. What you would do if you were bracketing on an unknown product is generally to pick a middle ground. You can, you can also bracket any direction you want. You can start, if you know there's 16 clicks of low speed compression, you could start at 16. You could start high speed at eight. You could open the rebounds all that matters is that you track this and that then you start working in a specific formula which means if i'm at 16 low speed compression i would do a run and i would make my little note i'd say ah oh, felt really soft dove a lot i didn't get full travel but i the fork still felt really soft if you don't even know that much, you don't have to make those notes. If you're just trying to figure out what these settings all do, that's totally fine too, but you still have to track it so that you understand where you are, where you're going, and where you can go back to. So if I'm at 16, I'd say my next run could be 13 on low speed compression, and I'm gonna do another run. That's the only thing I'm gonna change. Once you've done two runs from 16 to 13, you've made a significant change and you should feel something. Bracketing also not only helps for the actual setup to go faster, but it helps you figure out what these changes do to suspension, right? So if you don't know what low speed compression feels like, this is a great way to do it. So you'd make that change to 13 and you'd go, oh, that feels way better. The fork dove a lot less, but it's still pretty soft. Well, you could change that. Your next one would be 11. You do that run, you go, yeah, it felt pretty good, but it was a bit skippy. It, it, it didn't really want to track the ground and I got a lot of vibration through my hands. So 11 was worse than 13. Ideally, you'd split that number. So maybe you'd go to 12 and you'd go, oh man, that felt pretty good. I'm gonna leave that and I'm gonna go on to my next setting. So then you can go to high speed compression and we're at 16 and eight. 
you'd leave that 12 because that's what you liked. Then you'd do a run at seven and you'd go, well, is that better or worse? If it's better, then you'd go six. Is that better or worse? If it's worse, then boom, you're done. You're back at seven. And you, now you hit rebounds. This is just a basic approach to bracketing. You don't have to start from wide open or completely closed. You can do like the parking lot setup like we've shown plenty of times where you start from the middle. Or you can do your own parking lot feel with rebound, which is really pretty easy to do. You know, get things to where you think is close and then bracket from there. That'll probably save you time. You can also start with the, the recommended settings on the fork, which is also super easy. But the trick with bracketing is to make decent changes of one thing at a time until you narrow in on the sweet spot. So in suspension, we could say you're gonna go from too soft to too hard and then find the middle ground. Kind of just like three bears, fairy tale, <laughs> right? Yeah. The tricky thing with suspension is compression can mimic rebound and vice versa. We'll try to do a little visual. Sweet. It's it's hard if I'm just saying it feels like this or it feels like that. Right now I have rebound wide open. It moves really freely. So basically every bump you hit, it's going to return to a nice supple top position. If you end up closing rebound down too much, it gets almost impossible to pull the fork back. So what happens is if this is your fork, you hit that first bump and then your fork just sits there. Then you hit the second bump, it's even deeper. The third bump, it's even deeper. That's gonna feel like harsh. Yeah, it's almost like essentially rigid at that point. Right, but it's not harsh because it's got too much compression. It's harsh because rebound's really slow. And that's why when we bracket, we go back and forth. You do one circuit compression, you do another circuit rebound, you go back to compression and you go back to rebound. And yes, it takes a little bit of time, but it really only takes time when you're learning how to do it. You know, once you get the hang of it, it's, it's not nearly as time consuming because for one thing, you'll have a feel for how you want the bike in the first place then you, it, the matter of adjustment is almost never more than a couple clicks here or there. So even for us, you know, it's not, at, at races we're never more than one or two clicks from where we started from. There's more movement of body position like handlebars relative to seat, things like that, that change your balance and then you're changing springs a little bit. So you can change some pressure as far as hydraulics, nothing's very far. You're not talking about going from rebound at two to rebound at seven. It's two to three. The other point we need to make is that if you're doing this on old suspension that hasn't been serviced, you might as well just stop. <laughs> it's not gonna do you any good. Mm. And the reason is that, well, the main reason is friction, especially in a fork or an air shock that any type of friction is go is basically damping and that's slowing down the fork in compression and rebound. So if you go to make adjustments to a fork that doesn't really want to move on its own, it's not going to be super helpful. Mm -hmm. You could make this sheet on a piece of paper with a pen and a ruler or a freehand, mm -hmm. but you can also just print this out online. So, yeah. And then like you said, in, uh, another video, do it on your phone too, if that's easier. Yeah, phones are great. A lot of the riders will come into the pit, will make a change, and they'll make a note on their phone and then go back and put it down on a piece of paper or something so that they have a little book. It's, it's not hard. 
for most people, it's kind of fun because you get to go out and ride your bike and figure things out. Yeah. And things work so much better. I mean, it, it's like getting into your car and not adjusting the seat. You could drive all cramped up or not being able to reach the pedals, but why wouldn't you just figure out how to adjust the seat? Mm-hmm. It might be a little more complicated than that, but <laughs> if you don't do it, you never learn. And if you don't just start, you'll never get a grasp on how straightforward this stuff is. Mm-hmm.